Old Man here, and today we are taking this Badland winch and we are going to make a truck bed winch out of it using a seven point pin trailer power connector. That story is coming right up. What we've got here is a Badland 2500 winch system here that we're going to put in the bed of my truck over there and we are going to hook it up to 12 volt which is what your battery runs off of but instead of hooking it to the battery and or having to carry a battery around with me all the time I'm actually going to hook it up to a seven point trailer plug and we are going to operate it that way what you're going to need is obviously the winch, which I have right here, okay? You're going to need uh, a chain. So I got this galvanized heavy-duty chain. I got about, uh, I want to say, six feet of it, maybe seven feet. You're going to need some extra wire. Uh, this is 12-gauge wire. I got one for each color, black and red. Uh, I got six feet of that because we are going to be splicing some wires here on the winch to make it long enough to fit around the tailgate when it's down into the uh, seven pin connector. I picked up some uh, shrink wrap. This is actually uh, 3 8 inch shrink wrap for your wiring. It's 20 feet long. We'll be using that to seal uh, the wire in. And you need a uh, seven pin connector. I got one with an LED in it. I thought that would be, be pretty cool to show that power's on it. So when you plug it in, it should light up. And then you're also going to need an angle iron. So I've got this one inch by one inch by eighth inch angle iron. And you can see here, I've got a couple of holes in it already. I'll explain that here in a second. And I bought a four foot piece. This is the piece that I have here. Right here. And all I did is I just put it in my vice grip over here and I took a uh, hacksaw and a metal hacksaw and just trimmed the edge, edge of it off. It doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, I did that and we'll show you what's going on with that also. Oh, you also need the plate that goes with the Badlands. This is a separate item uh, from Harbor Freight. It's like $6 or $7, so uh, pretty inexpensive. Obviously, we have to put the winch that is sitting here on top of the plate, right? It's going to sit like that, pretty much. And then you have this roller piece that comes with the winch, which is a, it's the guide for the wire that's in the winch, and that's going to be connected on the back side here. We'll get to that in a little bit. And then you need an angle iron, which I cut off here. And this is actually going to sit on the bottom, if you look in the back here, uh, kind of like this. And the two holes that I have pre-drilled in it already are going to match up. So this hole is going to match up with this hole, and that hole is going to match up with that hole. And they're in line with this hole here, and in line with this, because these holes match the bottom of the winch where they screw into the winch to hold it in place. The reason why you want that is because the winch is going to be sitting in the back of the bed secured to the uh, tie down hooks that are in the bed. And what I'm using there is uh, like these tie down hooks, which are uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch, as you can see here, and they hold up to 1,760 pounds. You are going to be nowhere near that weight when you. Uh, pull something up into the bed of the truck. All right, so what I've got is the angle iron and I've got uh, the hole in it here. And what I'm going to do here is the hook here that holds 1,700 pounds is going to go in like that. And then we can just secure it there. But inside this is going to be that chain I showed you earlier. And it's going to be hooked to the side of the bed. There'll be another one on this side here that will go to the other side of the bed. So let's go back to the drill press. We're going to drill another hole right over here. So we can uh, attach the second one on this end, and then we'll move on. So I've got the bit lined up right up against the vertical part here because I want as much meat on 
each side of this to give it a little more strength. So that's what we've got here. It's called the anchor lube paste for drilling. came out pretty nice. I'm going to go clean this up right now, file down the edges, and then we'll be good to go. All right, I just cleaned that up. So now this should fit on both sides. Boom. There's one. And then if we put it on the other side, boom, two. We're golden. So the next thing I want to do now is I want to attach all of the units here and the pieces to the winch and secure them and then we can start working on the wiring. So the next thing we're gonna do here is attach the guide here for the wire onto the bracket, the mounting bracket. And I'm going to come from the inside out because the bolt would be so close to the winch that I don't want anything interfering with it. So I'm just gonna come from the inside out. And you can see here, if you look closely, we'll get the first one on there. And it's gonna go on nice. And then, We'll move that around. We'll get the second one on. Got my bolt and washer on there. Come, come through on the back. Lock washer. And then another nut to secure that. All right, so that looks pretty good right there. The winch will sit on top, the wire will feed through here, and hopefully it doesn't get bound up or wind up. So we're good there. Before all of this, I went ahead and painted the angle iron that's going to sit on the back here. And I really didn't care what color it was, so I just took the first color that was sitting in top of my paint bin and just happened to be this. Oh boy, well, I don't even know what color that is. It looks like an uh, orange, real orange gloss. We've got our orange painted bracket here, and that's going to go in the back here, like I said earlier. So now, let's go ahead and mount this thing correctly here. Got my pinky holding that in. Next, we're going to put a washer on top and then a lock washer on top of that and then we're just going to screw that down with this bolt here perfect crank it down all right i'm not going too tight because i still have to line the other side up so we'll tighten that down here in a second so I want to make sure that this is going to go on right. I want the flat to be on the back side, not like this, where it's facing the inside. So I want to put this on correctly, and it's going to go on just like this. Oh yeah, it's going through. It's a tight fit, but it's going through the ones that came with it. Now this one's gonna be a little more challenging. Or well, maybe not. Same deal, we're gonna put it through the hole, but I can't get the wrench around it, so we're gonna do this manually here like this. That's tight also. With those two being tight, I can go ahead and tighten the one on the front here. Ah. All right, check it out. Boom. Now we have our little bracket mounted onto the bottom bracket, which holds the winch, and it is tight and secure. This probably weighs 12, 10, 12 pounds maybe, something like that. Anyways, 
So now it's protected, it's painted. If any of this starts to peel off or anything, I'll just spray paint it again. I'm not gonna worry about it too much, but that looks awesome. Uh, just a side note here, when you're drilling on the hole that this is going to go into, you don't wanna get so far into the inside here where you can't get this in, right? So what I like to do is, when you put it on the side here, let me show you if I can show you. You wanna leave a little bit of a gap between this end bar and the edge here so you can actually maneuver it around like this. See what I'm doing here? You wanna leave that space in there. So on this particular one, maybe an eighth of an inch, that way you can loop it around and get it in there too. That's really important. If it's too far in, you can't get this in. See, if, it's, it was, if it was another eighth of an inch, I wouldn't be able to get it in there. So you wanna make sure you have enough gap. And there's plenty of meat here left on the outside here that it's going to be able to support itself. I've got my electrical stuff out here, uh, electrical soldering stuff. I've got an electrical bag. Anywho, so the winch comes with a bunch of stuff here, right? Um, comes with a remote, a plug-in remote, which we are not going to use. What it does come with is the main wiring piece here, right? Uh, this is the piece where the remote goes into, so you can use a wired remote. But it also has a wireless remote, which is awesome. And then it has all these wires on it. Now, the cool thing about Badland here is they label each one of the wires. So this one says two winch. See if you can see that there. Bam. Uh, this side also says two winch, right? You got a black and a red cable there. And on the winch itself, it's very uh, denoted on which wires to go to. But then on the other side here, you've got a red and black wire. This is to the battery. That's your red wire to the battery. It also has a circuit breaker in it. Bam. You also have another black wire here, which is also to the battery, which is negative. Red is positive. All right. However, we are not going to be hooking to the battery. We are going to be hooking to the 12 volt plug-in, which is this bad boy. And this is a typical seven pin trailer plug-in that goes in the back of your trailer when you wanna hook it up to your uh, trailer lights. 12 volt, so no problem there. And all we're going to do here is, I already got this unhooked, is we're gonna hook the ends of this wire to each one of the leads that are designated for the power and in this case the ground. So your red is your power, your black in this specific case is going to be hooked to your ground wire that is on this unit. Now the way this unit works is you have this little nib here. This is standard on all of these type of connections. And I've got mine label how that's going to work. And if you look closely here, the one o'clock position, which is here, if you're looking at it from the inside, the one o'clock position is your 12 volt power, which is gonna be the red wire. Directly across from that at seven o'clock, which is going to be this one, that is going to be your ground wire, and that's where the black wire is going to be connected to. That's all you need to operate this winch. It's the same coming off your battery, red and black, and uh, that's how this is going to be connected, and it should work. The, the challenge here is I need about six to eight more feet attached to this wire because the whole unit's going to be sitting in the bed of the truck which is five feet. I'm gonna have the tailgate down with the ramps hooked to it, which is another two feet. So I'm already at seven feet, and then it's gotta wrap around the tailgate back to the plug, which is another probably two feet, two and a half feet. So we're already at nine feet, right? Something like that, 10 feet. Well, this is only about six feet right here. So I have to add another four feet onto it minimum to get to the plug. And that's why we purchased the extra 
wire from the big box store to splice it on to this wire here so we can wrap it around the tailgate and plug it in. On top of that, as I mentioned earlier, I have this shrink wrap that will cover the entire wire. It's waterproof and it will help protect the wire once we shrink wrap that all down. This is, uh, what is this? That is 3 8 of an inch on the interior diameter, diameter and both wires should slide through there quite easily and then I can heat shrink it down. So what that means is, is that I want to save the ends here because those are going to go on the inside of this and connect here accordingly. So we're going to cut these, we're going to cut them here, splice them back, strip them back, then splice them together with the new wire, and then that should hold them all in place. There's no turning back after this. <laughs> all right. First one cut. All right. That'll work. And then we are going to strip this back. Both of those look pretty good. I'm going to cut it about halfway, maybe a foot in. And then we will trim this one back also. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to do this manually and cut it this way and then cut around because I don't want to lose any of the strands in here. So I'm just going to cut this right down the middle here. Hopefully this works. Yep. And then about right there. We'll come around each side here. And that should do that. Yeah. That worked. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, there's definitely more copper wires in here. It's really close. They're just about the same. This is definitely 10 gauge. This is 12 gauge. Unfortunately, I don't have a video of what I did here because it took me so long to get this connection. But underneath here, there is no solder because I stink at soldering. I just found out. <laughs> Plus, I'm not really using the right tool. I, I really need to heat the wire up and solder it that way and not apply the solder directly to the tip, which I already knew. But I figured I would try it anyways, and it just didn't work. So anyways, what I've done here, I've twisted it on the inside um, just to kind of hold it together. And I'm hoping the shrink wrap will hold it in place enough just to keep the connection. Plus, if you remember, we're going to put the second sheet, uh, the second coating of shrink wrap on top of this as these two wires are together. And I'm hoping that's going to uh, really make it secure enough in there. So I've got my heat gun right here. We're going to just turn it on and we're going to heat this up and hopefully we can get this to shrink pretty nice. Let's see what it looks like. Here we go. And there it is. It's not pretty, but it's holding. Doesn't look half bad. Check it out. It's not the cleanest, but it's definitely shrunk around there, and that looks pretty good. Yeah, look at that. That might work out pretty good. All right, let's try that. Ooh, that's hot. All right, check it out. Double shrink wrapped, and that is much better. All right.
right, I got the second one on, the black one. We're doing the black one first before I do the end of the red one because we gotta get both of the wires through the 3 8 inch sheet uh, shrink wrap. Ooh, it took a little while, but we were able to get the shrink wrap on both wires. I actually had to use some uh, three-in-one oil and put it into the uh, inside of the shrink wrap to be able to slide the wire through because I was getting a lot of resistance on the wire. I spent a considerable amount of time <laughs> preparing the final pieces here and it was pretty boring so I didn't want to show you that on screen but anywho um, we were able to splice the final pieces that, for the connection that are going to go into the seven point hitch here a trailer connection and what I've done here is I was able to actually use the solder on the connections here did a pretty decent job connecting it and then I wrapped it in tape and then put one of the shrink wraps on top of it and then another shrink wrap on top of it and it's pretty tight so we're in a good spot here the next thing to do here is to attach the wires here to the actual trailer connection the seven point trailer connection all right I went ahead and made the connections here but we got it connected to the one o'clock for the power and seven o'clock for the ground the black wire so everything is connected now all we need to do now is basically hook it up to the winch and plug this in to see if there's power going to it and test it out we've got our chain set up here that's to the bed hooks uh, at the end of the bed here and I've got the remote already started and we're extending the line out and we're just gonna hook it onto the back of the stump grinder there and pull it up all right let's see if this works So it is going to work, and you can see the tension already starting on here. All right, and we're just gonna guide it up. All right, so all you need to do now is just guide it in with the winch, so let's try it. That looks like it's working pretty nice. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. The winch worked perfectly, look at that. We got the stump grinder into the bed with no problems whatsoever. We got one more test. We need to get the stump grinder down Look at that, and there you have it. So if you're a one-man operation, or even a two-man operation, you don't want to lift this heavy thing in, we just solved uh, an economical way not to have a trailer, because we don't have one yet, <laughs> and the winch in the back. All right, that's gonna conclude the entire project here. That worked out fantastic. Uh, adding the chains on and you saw how it, the tension got on it and just pull this thing right up We're gonna wrap this one up Very successful project really happy with the results and I hope you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it So until next time ladies and gentlemen Peace out